Gather around, kiddos. I'm gonna tell you a story from animation history. A story about a man who was forgotten by history but really did more than anyone else. This is the story of Ob Ewerks, the man who was forgotten by time and the man who created Mickey Mouse. Wait a second, whoa, did I lose you there? Because as we all know, Walter Disney was the guy who made Mickey Mouse. He was the one with the cool mustache. Well, if you just said all of that, one, I'm surprised I was able to predict it that well, and two, you're actually wrong. And to tell you the full story, we gotta start where all interesting stories begin, in Kansas City, Missouri, 1898. A little baby boy graced this beautiful earth. His name was Ub Ewerks. Ub was a creative-driven kid with a lot of potential. Time for him to say goodbye to childhood he decided he wanted to pursue his life in art. But it was like the 19 whatevers. There was no art jobs. You couldn't be a YouTuber, you know? There wasn't Walt Disney Studios you could work at. So he got his first real job as an artist making theater programs and catalogs for the famous Pazman Rubin Art Studio in Kansas City, Missouri. There at Pazman Rubin, ah, God, what a horrible name. There at Pesman Rubin, he met a little, old, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed animator who shared a lot of the same passions. His name, wait for it, was Walt Disney. This is where Walt comes into the story. So eventually Pesman falls apart and the two end up getting laid off from their jobs. They do what any two normal young kids with dreams and passion do when they're laid off. They sink themselves right back into it and start their own company. In January 1920, two came together to form Walt Disney Studios. I'm just kidding. They formed Eworks Disney Corporation, which failed miserably. They couldn't get any customers, Disney ended up leaving, and then Ub left shortly after. <laughs> kind of an anticlimactic start to the story, but the two ended up working together again at the Kansas City Film Advertisement Company. Cause see, back then, if you wanted to do art full time, you couldn't really be an artist. I mean, that was just as hard as it is now, if not harder. So a lot of times you just went into advertising and made like theater pamphlets cause you could draw good. But they were looking to change that with animation. Eventually, Ub and Walt came together with a few of their high school buddies and started making these things called laughograms, which made these cute little animated shorts. As the laughogram process took off, Ub started shining as an artist, as an incredible animator, and all of his peers took notice. He became the most important asset to the company, and laughograms, they started taking off. People started liking them. Then their investor went dummy bankrupt, and they had to invest a bunch of their own money into the laughogram company, which means that they were more invested than ever into making these little animated shorts. And they decided they wanted to do things different. They wanted to do something that was unique, original, experimental. They created the series Alice's Wonderland. Not the movie, not quite yet. Alice's Wonderland was basically pretty amazing for the time. They animated this little Shirley Temple kind of girl into animated things. They put her in the cartoon world. It's a super dumb way of describing it, but for the time it was like pretty revolutionary. I mean, people have done the opposite where they put cartoons in the real world. They kind of flipped that script and it was really popular. Alice's Wonderland took off and became a huge film series. And while all of this was going on, Ub continued to just outproduce all of the other animators on his team. They ended up doing that for about three years until the two went on to their next big venture. To Universal was like, what are these cartoon pictures? I want to start making those. And they decided to hire Ub and Walt Disney to create a character for their first line of cartoons. Together they created, ooh, you guessed it, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Remember Epic Mickey? Remember that story? Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was their first cartoon project together and it was extremely popular. But wait a second, if they already had their successful franchise, why would Disney even try to work on anything else? Well, enter the piece of actual human scum who is Charles Mintz. Charles Mintz was sort of at the head of the whole operation and he actually owned the rights to Oswald. Eventually, Mintz wanted to move on and start his own animation company. Sort of this shady offside business venture. He went up to Ub and he's like, hey Ub, I'll pay you if you come to my company and I'll make you more money, I'll make you a star, and Ub's like, no, I'm with Disney, I'm not leaving for nothing. And then the entire rest of his staff was like, ah, this is awkward, we actually uh, decided to go with Mintz. And then Disney's like, what the heck, bro, this is like our vision. And Mintz was like, well, I own Oswald, and you don't. And now I have your animators, and you don't. Which means I took everything you had, Disney, and history will remember me as the ultimate victor. Ha 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 So Ub and Disney were like, oh my gosh, we don't know what we're gonna do now, we gotta get something new happening fast. So they set out on making their own cartoon character, a star of their own cartoon. Boy. You know where I'm going with this one, ladies and gentlemen. You know where this is going. To keep the project secret, Ub worked in extreme secrecy in the last three months he worked on Oswald. He would be behind locked doors, working day and night to try to design a new cartoon character, and 
Ooh, he did he cook up something? Mwah. They looked at cats, they looked at dogs, they looked through old magazines, and they realized no one had done a mouse yet. So humbly Ub sat down, drew a couple of circles, and after hours of hard work and research, he created Mickey Mouse. Ooh, I finally got to say that part. That was the most exciting part. And you might be saying, no, 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 no. Disney made the mouse. He drew the mouse and then they started making money and he was a genius. No, not, not even close to being true. When it came to the hard work, it, it was all up. This is where it gets actually crazy. Cause you know how I said he was a good animator before? Well, he literally cranked that into like the 18th gear with this one. He knew he had to get this done fast. So while working on Oswald, Ub secretly animated the first Mickey Mouse cartoon by himself. I'm talking 700 drawings a day. This work that would take months and he did it in two weeks. To do it in secret, he actually put fake pictures of Oswald over Mickey so that nobody would be like, hey, that's not our, that's not our thing. And it was successful. The first Mickey Mouse cartoon, Plain Crazy, released to being a hit. Soon, everybody was talking about Mickey Mouse. He was another celebrity. He was better than Oswald. Sorry, Mints. Mm. Things were going great. Their company, Walt Disney Pictures, was blowing up. Ub was finally in a place where he got married and he was like having kids and stuff and he was doing great. They were making Mickey cartoons. They were big shots in Hollywood again. Just success after success. Nothing stopped these guys except for each other. Cause see, as Disney grew bigger and bigger, creative differences started to split the two apart. Because of the demands, Disney's like, okay, I got this part and I got this part. And he started taking more and more control over the whole operation and Ub felt neglected. Cause Walt was gonna handle more of the business stuff and Ub was left to the animation. He was so good to it. Why would you fix something that's not broken? But Walt continued to try to do that. He was telling him how to animate. He was changing the times on his animation sheet, which if you know animation back then, that was pretty sacred. Ub was kind of getting sick of it. There's even reports that Walt Disney would play pranks on him and he wouldn't find him funny. Tensions were at their highest between the two. And that's when the MGM came up to Ob and they're like, hey buddy, how would you like to have your own animation company where you're the head and you make the rules and you get to be the star and we'll probably pay you more and your name will be on it. And he took it, man. Ob was responsible for making Disney what he was and he chose consciously to leave. A decision that probably uh, wasn't the best in the long run. At first, it was great. Ub created the character Flippy Frog and he was all zany and he was a frog with a bow tie. Flippy Frog was actually a very popular film series. So was his other one, Willy Whopper. He had a couple of hits under his belt. They were making tons of money. It was the Great Depression, they didn't even feel it. But as the depression dragged on, the public's views started changing. See, Ub was a very satirical person and his satire came through in his cartoons a lot. And the more the war dragged on and the depression followed, people were getting sad, they were looking for escapism. They didn't want satire that would make them sad, they wanted to escape into a world of happiness. That's where Disney succeeded and Ub ultimately failed. It didn't help that his cartoons also got more experimental and weird as time went on, which I think is really cool, but at the time, people weren't looking for that. They just wanted to see a happy mouse dance around, they wanted to see Snow White. On top of this, it's crazy to say, but Ub was getting tired of animation. If that seems crazy to you, you have to understand that's the kind of person that Ub was. He literally famously started bowling, then the second he bowled a 300 perfect game, he put it in his closet and never touch the sport again. This man would take apart his car and reassemble it just for fun. He was just obsessed with perfection and gaining skill. But at this point, he was more interested in the technological aspect of animation and how you furthered it technologically. He actually built the first multi-plane camera setup for animation himself. A multi-plane camera setup is basically what it sounds like. It's just a bunch of different planes of animation stacked on each other. This way there's a sense of depth to the animation. It's really interesting. Now, Disney got a lot of credit for this for Snow White. People were saying that Disney made it. Again, no. Alba made this thing in his garage out of car parts by himself. Maybe Disney took a hold of that design and kind of perfected it a little. Ub's was long ways, Disney ended up being vertical, I don't know, they just wanted to change it I guess. But that was all Ub who made the prototype. Eventually, the two paths ended up reconverging again. And after Ub's studio fell apart and he was looking for more work, he ended up being asked to come back to Disney. So in Roots. Now even though they had creative differences, Walt and Ub always respected each other. They were always lifelong friends, so when he came back, it was actually pretty wholesome. He rejoined Disney and became head of their special effects department. And this is where Ub really changed the game, like, long term. He was responsible for Xeroxing method that allowed 101 Dalmatians to have 101 instead of, like, only 7. He invented the sodium traveling matte plate. That doesn't sound impressive to you? Well, it should, because we call it a green screen. He even helped with non-animation projects, like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Walt Disney ended up dying soon after, which was very sad. And after a couple of years and some more innovating, Ub passed away as well. Now look, I know Walt Disney has done a lot, and Disney as a company is 
huge and is a huge innovator in the entertainment industry. There's nothing like Disney. I'm not trying to take away from any of the other stuff, but I am saying that Ub is an incredible individual who I didn't even know before I started researching for this video, and now I can't believe he's not remembered for as much as he's done. At least for the guy who made Mickey Mouse, because it wasn't Walt Disney, it was Ub. I'm not saying this guy should be just dug up right now and put on a pedestal as we all bow down to his greatness. I'm just saying, credit where credit's due. Ub Ewerks was a visionary that history forgot, and it makes me mad. So please, spread this video around. Let everyone know Ub's story, because really, doesn't he deserve it? Let me just take a second from this video to mention our incredible sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Guys, we're all human beings here, let's be honest. We all have our own grooming routines. We all have to shower. We all have to brush our teeth twice a day. Make sure that our hair doesn't look as bad as it does when we enter the real world full of adults who will judge you. Well, I bet you didn't know that Dollar Shave Club, yet yeah, the Dollar Shave Club, provides a lot of other products for grooming overall. They have all the grooming products you need. We're talking toothpaste, body wash, hairstyling products. Everything a guy could ask for to make sure he's smelling great, he's looking great, and he's feeling great. I didn't even know that Dollar Shave Club sold all these products, but they really are incredible. Everything I've heard about Dollar Shave Club, everyone I know who's used them has said they're absolutely incredible, they're just quality products, and they work. And this is your lucky chance, because Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their Daily Essential Starter Set to new members for only $5! Think about all the stuff you spent $5 on. McDonald's costs more than that. The Starter Set features three trial sites versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean, along with their executive razor. What comes in the box, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. You got their shave butter, their body wash, their one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. And just because they love you that much, they're going to throw in their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and full cassette cartridges. After the first box runs out, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. That's nothing. Quality razors at a cheap price. Quality grooming supplies at a cheap price. Do you want to walk around smelling bad? Do you want to walk around looking bad? No. You want to love yourself. You want to smell your best and you want to look your best and guys, Dollar Shave Club gives you the best opportunity for the best price with quality products that will never fail to keep you feeling clean. This $5 offer is available at dollarshaveclub.com slash roundtable. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash roundtable. Alright, back to the history lesson. The end. Ah! There you have it guys, that was a tale from animation history, one that hopefully you didn't know. Thanks for sticking it to the end. I actually want to make this a series and I want to do this full time, so if you guys enjoyed this, there's tons of stories from animation history I can do, please let us know in those comments if you want more of this. And seriously, spread this story around. I, I want Ub to just be remembered for everything. Guys, if you want to consider helping out the round table, you can check us out on Patreon. There you can get exclusive access to scripts and avatars, have your name featured at the end of the video, or a shout out at the end of the month if you pay a little bit more money. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, subscribe to the round table, and hit that notification bell to stay linked with all things animation. Guys, I'm Retro Nemo. This is a tale from cartoon history. I'll see you next time. Peace.